Who was the greatest money man in the Bible? Noah. He was floating his stock while everyone else was in liquidation. Oh boy. A groaner, yes. I got two more groaners. Who was the best female finance lady in the Bible? Pharaoh's daughter. She went down to the bank of the Nile and drew out a little profit. Ah. Uh, what do they call pastors in Germany? German shepherds. And lastly, powerful words. The phrase that is guaranteed to wake up a congregation during a sermon. And in conclusion, <laughs> all right, well, thank you everyone for joining us on this sacred day, this sacred space, and in this sacred time. And I want to give back a little bit of what I enjoyed this past week. I love going to our annual conventions. They energize me, our Council of Ministers gathering together. It's the one time of the year that we have that opportunity. Uh, if, you're, if you do happen to run upon uh, Reverend Dan Burchett this next week, you get to wish him a congratulations because he was inducted even though he was ordained into the Assemblies of God decades ago. He has been on a long spiritual journey. And this was ordination by induction, meaning that he was already ordained, but he has transferred that over to the Sweden Origin Church here. And it was a, a powerful ordination service there in Indiana. So if you see Dan this next week, you can congratulate him. He is now a fully ordained Sweden Origin minister here and working as the director of finance and administration. So. That was exciting to witness his own journey. Uh, he's been here uh, doing rites and sacraments for about 19 years. I've known him for about 13 of those. So it was a, a great way to uh, see that moment happen and also knowing the journey that it took for him to get there. Our keynote speaker, Reverend Dr. Matthew Fox, prolific writer, includes one called Original Blessing. And he got, I, we got to know a little bit more about his journey and his story this past week. Uh, early on, he's, he's a Dominican priest, uh, was. Um, he caught the attention of then Cardinal Ratzinger, which if you remember, he became, went on to become the Pope for a little while. And he was indeed defrocked because he taught one thing, it's not original sin. We're not all born complete sinners. He redubbed that as original blessing and went on to develop creation spirituality, that this life is a gift and that is part of that original blessing that we develop. And he went on to tell other things about, um, you know, just fascinating things about his own journey, where he's at, and, and uh, one of the things that is his newest project is really getting a commitment from anyone out there. Doesn't really matter what the belief is as long as you make one commitment to do what you can to help the environment. Do what you can. Make that commitment. This past week, I learned some interesting things. It came out of science. They said, well, we have the solution to fixing all this uh, extra carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. And guess what it is? Plant trees, that's right plant trees. That's the one thing that we already know is there is space to do that. So grab some seeds, some seedlings, start planting trees like there is no tomorrow. At least one trillion trees need to be planted and fast. There's enough space for them and it may sound like a lot of trees but there is room on the planet. They've done the mapping. It can handle it. And guess what? It's kind of fun planting a tree. It's kind of nice. One thing you may not know, this, while it's known locally as the Glass Chapel, it's actually more intentional and 
intended to be the tree chapel. What better place to send this message, to plant trees, than right here, the center of the tree chapel. So, if you don't know what to do, got some idle time, go ahead and plant a tree, or two, or three, or a dozen, 200, one trillion, we're getting there. Why? Because there are 3.5 million square miles to, to spare for trees. That's already out there. And it can bring down what's already in there in the atmosphere, the amount of carbon dioxide, by 25% in the next 100 years. So the research has gone into it. We know the solution. We just need to take some action. Go ahead and plant some trees. It's fun for you, fun for kids, good for generations down the line. So bringing the topic of the day back to home. Why is this a central message there in Jesus' teachings over 2,000 years ago? And yet it is one of those things that it's easy to acknowledge in the intellect. Yeah, lay down my burdens. And, you know, you think about that. It's like I find a moment or two where it feels like I'm at peace or rest. But, boy, it is hard to sustain that letting go of the burdens. Why? Well, I'll give you a few reasons. I'll address a few of the situation that we're in, some of the situations. It's a stressful time to be alive. We've got mortgages, rents, car payments, health care, insurance, politics, environment, angry people. Any of those are stressful. Bless you. Chronic stress is linked to the six leading causes of death. And that's according to the American Psychological Association. Chronic stress is linked to heart disease, cancer, lung ailments, accidents, cirrhosis of the liver, and suicide. And 75% of all office visits to see a physician are for stress-related ailments and complaints. That's a lot of stress. So here's the invitation to attempt to lay down those burdens and keep them there. Don't pick them back up. It's hard to do. We like to perseverate on things that are wrong. It's part of our biology. So the solution, at least one of them, it's not a new phenomenon to have stress. It was certainly there at the time that Jesus walked the earth. It is a difference in how our minds interact with our biology. Here's a question because some of those things no longer serve our best interest in health and wholeness. Can you imagine your own life without any problems? Is it possible? What if you could turn over those problems to someone else? Share those burdens so that they actually do feel lighter, that you're not carrying the full weight of those. You can. You can. In fact, that is the central message that Jesus says in that scripture from Matthew 11. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now the metaphor that's used there, the, the parable, the yoke, if you know what the yoke is, usually it associated with the oxen and usually made of wood. Now if you think about putting that on, you might not think that that's uh, something that's going to lighten your burden, but if you carry that further out, the oxen, which is a strong animal, was usually set with more than one other animal beside. So the burden was not yours alone. It's saddled to others outside of you that are also pulling. And when you think about all those things in your life that you are pulling, that you are responsible for, how much easier is that load to carry and pull forward when there are others, multiple, on either side? 
That's the invitation that Jesus gives us, to put that on and allow the work of life to be shared. It is not your burden to carry. Bring it to the Lord. Lay it down. There is, well, I'll, I'll uh, leave one other thing that Matthew Fox brought, which is uh, talking about all these angels here on the planet Earth. They're unemployed. They're just walking around looking for someone to call upon them. He's saying, we need to employ and actively act on that realm that we can't see with our physical eyes. And when we do, they are there to help and assist. It takes us to bring the invitation. And that's very similar to the yoke. We got a problem, we bring to the Lord, we have assistance. There are plenty of angels here with us now. You need to draw upon them to have their assistance. Psalm 62 also provides that deep assurance. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. And now we are getting to the conclusion parts here. The challenge of stress in our lives is a big one. It affects us on many levels. The difference between understanding God and reading scripture and, and thinking about it, thinking about what and who God is, is radically different than actually feeling the experience and feeling God's presence with you day in, day out. The invitation to lay down one's burdens is also the invitation to put on more of Christ's energy in your entire life, to connect with God directly, to bring those problems, to invite the solutions, to invite God more fully into whatever problem you have because guess what? When you invite the angels, when you invite the Lord to enter in, it will shift the situation, it will change it. And hopefully you will feel lighter because your burden is no longer just your own. Plant some trees. It's fun, it's good, it's a solution for the long term for us wrestling with how do we navigate living on this planet. When you do bring your burdens to the Lord, not only are shifts taking place, you're unburdening yourself, but it's a reminder that with God, all things are possible. Share those burdens, the, share those problems, and when you do this, your burden will become light. And it could be lighter in a feeling sense, or it could be the other transcendent light that enters into your life. Come to me. All of you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May the Lord so help us all. Amen.